Okay, welcome to another explanation of some of the principles governing acid-base extractions. Uh, most specifically, this time, what we're going to be looking at or asking ourselves about is how to select a proper pH for the aqueous layer when conducting such an extraction. So our question for this discussion is, how can one go about selecting the proper pH for a given extraction? And in order to do this, we're going to look at an example system consisting of two compounds, 3-methylbenzoic acid, which is a conjugated, it's an aromatic organic acid, and 2-naphthol, which is an aromatic alcohol. Uh, and these two compounds have different acidities and therefore will release their acidic protons under differing conditions. And we're going to look at how we can use this behavior to our advantage to separate a physical mixture of the two. As the name implies, acid-base extraction relies heavily on the equilibrium between conjugate acids and bases. So we want to begin our discussion by looking at the specific equilibria with which we are dealing. The first would be the equilibrium between 2-naphthol and its conjugate base 2-naphthalate. Naphthol, being an aromatic alcohol, has a pKa very similar to that of phenol, about 10. And if we plot this as a Henderson-Hasselbalch plot, where we have our y-axis labeled as maximum and minimum partitioning coefficient, what we see is that the transition occurs over a range of about 4 pH units with a center point uh, equal to the pKa of the compound. So between pHs of approximately 8 and 12, this equilibrium is in the process of shifting. And at pHs below 8 and above 12, the equilibrium is fairly set. A second compound of interest is the 3-methylbenzoic acid. This has a pKa of approximately 4. So if we were to plot this on the same area as our uh, other Henderson-Hasselbalch plot, what we see is a similar shape plot, but with a transition which occurs much earlier at about pH 4. So between the pHs of 2 and 6, this particular compound or this particular equilibrium for this compound is in the process of shifting. And at pHs below 2 and above 6, the equilibrium is fairly well established. Now let's take a look at what's going on inside of the flask or inside of the separatory funnel as we change the pH of the aqueous layer. For the purposes of this discussion, we'll define the top layer as the organic and the bottom layer as the aqueous. So we're assuming that we're working with something like ether uh, or benzene here, some type of an organic solvent which is less dense than water. If we begin by setting the aqueous layer to pH 1 and locate this position on our Henderson-Hasselbalch plot, what we notice is that both of the partitioning coefficients are at their highest point, meaning that both compounds are expected to be as soluble in the organic layer as possible. In our previous discussion, we looked very closely at this equilibrium, but for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to place our cartoon representations of our molecules in a position where the bulk of them will be collecting. So in this case, at pH 1, we'll have the naphthol and the benzoic acid all accumulated in the organic layer. Clearly this is not an ideal situation if our goal is to separate the two in space from one another. So let's alter our aqueous layer pH now, increasing it to 7.5. As we do so and we read along our plot, what we notice is that we are at a position on the plot where the two different compounds traces are as far apart from one another as possible. More specifically, the 3-methylbenzoic acid has completely undergone an equilibrium shift to 3-methylbenzoate, making it much more soluble in the aqueous layer. The consequence of this is, of course, that this equilibrium will be shifted to the right and that most of our methylbenzoic acid will accumulate as methylbenzoate in the aqueous layer. At this point, we have achieved a good separation of our compounds, or at least as good of a separation as one could hope for. If we continue to increase the basicity of the aqueous layer, for example, moving from our zone where we have good separation to one beyond it, say pH 14, what we notice is that the uh, two curves have now come back together. In other words, both of the compounds now have a very low partitioning coefficient, or at least as low as possible. The consequence of this is that the naphthalate equilibrium has shifted in favor of the deprotonated form. 
This means that as much naphthol as possible will move into the aqueous layer as naphthalate. And now we have ad actually defeated the purpose of conducting our extraction because although we have successfully moved methyl benzoate into the aqueous layer, we've also brought a great deal of naphthalate into the aqueous layer with us. So in the case of separating two weak acids from one another, we're looking for an aqueous layer pH which will only bring the strongest acid into the aqueous layer and which will leave as much of the weaker acid in uh, the organic layer as possible. So by overlaying Henderson-Hasselbalch plots or simply remembering the two pH unit rule and attempting to find an aqueous layer pH which is between the two pKa values of our compounds, we can correctly select an aqueous layer pH which gives us an optimal extraction.